Hello, my fellow gladiators, spectators, and warriors. It has been another two weeks of grueling physical therapy, but we've made progress. We're weighing in at 97.6 kilograms this week. Let us see what we have done in this episode of Resurrecting Hercules. Oh yeah, look at that big old titty pump! I am freaking amped to talk to you guys this week about what has gone on for the last two weeks. Starting with my chest progress, and let's just jump right into bench. I want to show you guys everything, even the bad form, even the stuff where I'm trying to learn what to do right. So this is the first chest session that I had in the two weeks that you guys haven't heard from me. And this one, I don't have it quite down. I'm really just trying to get the mind-muscle connection to do the right things and do the right motions. So I'm using 135 right here. You can see my head's coming off the bench. I'm not worrying about keeping my head on the bench. I'm trying to get the form of keeping my rib tips down so that you don't see my rib cage just sticking up really heavy and putting all my weight in my upper traps. And I'm also trying to keep my lower back down by holding my abs, specifically my TVA tight, and by tucking my hips under me by flexing my gluteus medius. Now a lot of people who are a little bit more experienced with lifting, who have been lifting for multiple years, tend to move towards a powerlifting stance when it comes to the bench. So I know a lot of people are going to send in critiques um, telling me to really stick my rib cage up, really put a lot of pressure on my upper trap, and really exaggerate the arch to my back. But because I have a really bad impingement that I'm working through to get better, I'm trying not to use those forms because those are the forms that actually sent me into an impingement by relying on those forms instead of learning the right muscle movement control to be able to bench without impingement in a regular form. Anyways, I'm setting up for the bench. I'm doing a lot of like preparation reps so I can try to get my mind wrapped around how I'm gonna be moving this weight. In a second, I'll show you guys something called the three-point pull that has really helped me a lot. But what you'll see is you'll see my arms go from full extension straightened. You'll see me drop just about an inch or two. That's the first step in the three-point pull. And then I'm just gonna be dropping my elbows while trying to tuck my shoulder blades, get the bottom parts of my shoulder blades to come together as close as possible, bring my elbows down, keeping my hands slightly back towards my face because I was before having my hands too far forward and I was sort of doing a front raise while benching, which was causing impingement as well. And then try to drive my elbows narrow and underneath the bar to engage my chest, but not put myself into impingement by allowing my shoulders to roll forward as I get to the bottom of the movement or by letting go of those tight areas of my abs and my glutes, allowing my rib cage to flare up and putting me into an impingement. Again, remember guys, I haven't fixed everything perfectly. I'm not a professional at this exact thing. So I'm just showing you what I'm doing through my physical therapy so that it can give you ideas and show you my progress each step of the way. Okay, so this little exercise serves as a bit of a cue for yourself and also a bit of a way to train your shoulder blades to do the right thing in motion. So after positioning yourself with your feet about shoulder width apart, pointed straight forward and getting your spine into neutrality by tucking your hips forward and sucking your stomach in, then you're gonna let yourself fall all the way back to a fully extended and straightened arm position, even letting go of your shoulder blades completely so that everything is loose. The first point of this three-point pull comes from moving your shoulders back, that first motion. It's so slight, so you're gonna overdo it over and over and over and over and over and over, but it's just a very slight setting of the shoulders backwards. Then from this position, rotate your hands outwards just slightly, five, 10 degrees so that your hands are facing a slight bit more upwards. Now slowly pull your elbows down to your rib cage, not as far back as you think you might have to go. This is not a lat row, this is just trying to get your shoulder blades moving correctly. Once your elbows are at your ribs, check that you have not shrugged your shoulders and your traps are completely loose. You want it so that that your traps could be pressed on by a friend and they could tell that they are not flexed. Then this final point is the hardest one to get down and get into your head. You're literally moving almost nothing at all. You're just trying to get your shoulder blades to come a little bit closer together and cause your chest to expand and open up. The third point is again, less than an inch of motion. But when you do it correctly, you will see your chest expand up and you'll feel your shoulder blades tuck, not only closer together to the spine, but also with the bottom part of your shoulder blade coming closer to your rib cage and sliding against your rib cage instead of sticking off of it and, and winging. So I do this exercise before every single upper body day now to get my shoulder blades into proper position and get my mind wrapped around it. Then from here, I'll hit some rear delts just to get my shoulders engaged and move on to a chest day. The sauce we're making right now is soy sauce, chili paste, a little bit of some agave, and some minced ginger all together in this little thing right here. Back to old school bodybuilding right here. Literally, 
this week, the last couple weeks, I've just been eating anything that I can get my hands on. So whatever's in the fridge, when I'm eating most of my food at night, I just cook it all at once and, and try to get it in it all at once. So starting over on the right, I got some leftover enchilada pasta. I showed this in a full day of eating, I think like three or four ago. It is really, really good. We had some leftovers, so that's just an easy one. I got these tostadas. These tostadas are cool because they are like super low fat. They're baked. I think they have like 1.5 grams of fat. So each of these tostadas is 50 calories. Uh, Baby Girl was just making these. She was making them for herself, and I was like, throw me two more of those. Again, literally anything I can shovel into my mouth. Cut these into little slices. These are just potatoes, and then I put these in the toaster and I just kept putting it down, just keep putting it through the toaster cycle like four or five times while I was cooking everything else. Finally, the creme de la creme. This is what the main course of this is. This is lo mein. So I just found out about these noodles. I know, I've heard of lo mein before, but I haven't actually processed. These are the perfect noodles that I've been looking for. These are the kind of noodles that like slide against each other. They don't get like starchy and thick and kind of stick and paste together. These are freaking amazing. We also made a little bit of a sauce uh, that was homemade. So it's like soy sauce, some minced ginger, some chili paste, and then I just put a bunch of broccoli in there. Probably about a cup and a half, two cups. Cut them up into little pieces, sauteed those, and then that's what we got. So this is just dinner, and then I have another dinner coming after this, and I've already eaten about 2,000 calories up at this point. So we are doing some rehab exercises. <laughs> this is probably like 30 to 45 minutes every single day before I actually hit any exercise, before I actually start like my full workout. I usually do it five to six times a week, but it totally sucks. But at the same time, I know that it's helping and I know that it's gonna make it so that I can get better and better and better. So I do it, but I can't lie, it totally sucks and it's not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> but make sure you do your stretches and make sure that you keep your stuff strong because otherwise you'll end up getting injured just like me. Yeah, and your butt will fall out. Your butt will fall out. <laughs> All right, my warm-ups are done. I'm all jacked up. I'm friggin' ready to start squatting. These are the shoes that I wear every single time that I do squats because they're flat bottom. This is like a tip that I think everybody should know. If you're gonna do squats, barbell squats, or really anything where you have weight in your feet and you're doing leg exercises, you gotta have either barefoot or completely the same platform because otherwise it'll throw you off, put your posture wrong, and it'll mess you up. So I'm wearing my dirty pair today, but these are as nature intended, A and I. If you use my code, then they'll donate a portion of the proceeds of this sale to Mercy for Animals, which is a sanctuary for animals. And as a bonus, these are vegan, which is pretty sweet. All right, now let's break down my squat. I'm really excited to show you guys what progress we've made this week. Boys and girls, let us talk squats. You did read that title frame correctly. We are putting back squats back into the workout routine. We're getting to the point where we've now created the right baselines of, of how to do movement, and now we're trying to reinforce it by putting it into heavier, complex movements. My physical therapist had me squat twice a week for the last two weeks, and then I'm going to be squatting again this week, heavier with 85% of my max. But just watching this, you can see me overthinking. So I'm trying to shove my my glutes forward trying to open my my hip flexors I'm trying to keep my chest up without flaring my rib cage trying to keep my rib tips down by flexing my abdominals sucking in all these different things and it's all really overwhelming and what the trick was this week when I went into therapy actually just today they had me do all the cues they had me do all the warm-ups they had me thinking really hard but then when I got to the squat they said stop thinking just do it don't think about any of the cues just go for it and it worked out a lot well, a lot better. Now this footage, I think it looks a little bit better, but again, I am still overthinking it. This is with a little bit more weight, so I am uh, also testing my, my, my form with a little bit of a heavier weight, but it looks a lot better. Like the motions are looking good to me. They feel good to me. I'm having a bit of a rotation in my torso, so we're working on fixing that. But in terms of how my hips look in this, I feel like it looks really good. The only critique I would give myself is I just want to shift a little bit more of the weight forward to the front of my feet or the midfoot rather than back on my heels. My cues here are I'm trying to squeeze the bottom of my butt cheeks which is the gluteus medius and I'm also trying to make this movement feel kind of like a crunch as I'm coming up like I'm doing a weighted crunch and really flexing man I'm just freaking pumped that barbell squats are back ah and with that it brings us to the end of this week and here I must tell you about how I feel of our progress and I feel pretty freaking good, my friends. It has been so exciting to be able to hit my chest, hit my shoulders. You can see in this shot right here, got a lot more thickness in every part of my upper body because I've been able to do these motions that I haven't been able to do for so long. I feel like I've been crippled and it's freaking awesome and exciting to be able to move the way that I've always moved for 10 years and then I've been crippled in these last couple of years, it feels like. I'm absolutely stoked with the progress. I'm stoked with the movement training that we're doing with physical therapy. I wish I could go faster, but I understand it. So I'm happy where we are. Are, and I can't wait to show you what progress you make in the next episode of Resurrecting Hercules.